I've been having a blast with top-down shooters lately, with Ruiner being one of the best I have played to date. So when I saw God's Trigger in my library, I had to give it a go. To say God's Trigger is enjoyable really depends on how many times you want to see yourself die. Because you will be dying a lot. And I mean a lot. Developed in Unity by One More Level and published by Techland Publishing, God's Trigger came out in 2018 for Xbox One, PS4 and Steam. In 2020, the game was released on Epic Store, where I managed to get it for free as part of Epic Game Store's free game giveaway. I'm playing the game in 1080 resolution and my PC is powered by AMD Ryzen 5 1600, 32GB of RAM and an ASUS 1070 Turbo with 8GB of VRAM. Oh, and I'm also playing it with my Xbox One controller. The game follows Harry, a wingless angel cast out of heaven, and Judy, a demon who does not want to go back to hell. They team up to take on four horses of the apocalypse. Apparently the apocalypse is coming sooner than expected and Harry is determined to stop it. Uh, I need to work on my emergency landing. An angel without wings? Judy does not want to go back to hell so she decides to team up with the fallen angel to prevent the end of the world. Tagging along with her seemed like the best bet to get the job done. Plus, for some reason, she wanted to beat the hell out of him as much as I did. They need to take out pestilence. I curse you both. Famine. I will regrow my brood. But first, I will eat you alive. Death. Fools. Prepare for death's sweet embrace. And war. Destroy itself, and I will provide them with a means to do so. On guard, assholes. God's Trigger adds his own unique spin to the story by making these four entities more grounded in reality. Pestilence is a movie actor that can influence people, Famine runs a cult which is responsible for capturing people and not feeding them. She had to be stopped as soon as possible. Her cultist army was growing fast. Death runs his own gang and manufactures his own drug that turns his consumers into homicidal maniacs. And war, from what I can gather, sells firearms to armies. So basically, a less likable version of Tony Stark. After taking the four out, you make your way into purgatory where it seems like Archangel Gabriel has taken over. And it is up to you to stop him. If you're a subscriber to my channel and if you aren't, why the hell not? Pause this video right now and hit the subscribe button. If you are a regular viewer of my content, then you would know that I love a decent story in a game. God's Trigger's story is okay. I'm gonna be honest, I was not playing the game to find out what will happen next. The game's story is bare bones basic. It tells you what's happening, where your character is going, and who will you be taking out next. And in that respect, the game does a good job. It has a functional story. Unfortunately, the storytelling side of things is where things go sideways. What I mean by that is, the game could have told a story that explores the characters a bit more. But unfortunately, it does not. For example, when taking on Pestilence, you begin to hallucinate. Harry sees wings that he desperately wants back. My wings! I have to get my wings back! Snap out of it! This isn't real! And Judy sees Hellfire that she's so afraid of. Hellfire! They found me! It's only Pestilence playing his tricks on us. There are no other sequences like these which fleshes out the characters even more. Their fears, motivations, their softer side, whatever. I kept playing the game hoping to get more exposition about the characters but unfortunately, there weren't any. Yes, there were cutscenes that made the characters look cool, but once again, I wanted to know more about the characters rather than seeing the story unfold and where I'm going to be taken next in the game. The voiceover thankfully was spot on. Harry and Judy both sounded like complete badasses. The character design, although not unique, 
they definitely look pretty cool and I guess it was intentional to give them a more grounded look. The gameplay side of things is where God's Trigger managed to separate itself from many top-down shooters I have played recently. Unlike Ruiner or Dead Nation Apocalypse Edition, your character has no health meter. They will die with just one hit. It might seem like a big deal but when you have three or more enemies in a section and two of them are carrying guns, then it becomes a challenge. So I'm not making it up, you will be dying a lot in this game. One time I died like 30 plus times, but I handled it like a champ. Thankfully, there is the stealth option. It is not as deep as, say, Metal Gear Solid games, but it works. As long as the enemies are not aware of your presence and they have their backs turned to you, you can just run up behind them and take them out. Stealth kills get rid of the bodies which do not alert patrolling enemies, but doing so will also get rid of any weapons they might be carrying. But when the brown stuff hits the fan and you have to engage in combat, it is survival of the fastest fingers because a split second can change the course of the level. You start off with your basic melee weapon. For Harry, it's his sword and for Judy, it's her bladed chain. The sword can one hit kill just about any enemy and while the chain is not as powerful, it does have a long reach so you can take out enemies before they get close to you. You can pick up enemy weapons like handguns, submachine guns, tesla ray guns and even a toy gun that can knock down enemies. You can even throw melee weapons so if you're carrying a baseball bat you can throw it to take the guy out. Combat is certainly satisfying relying solely on your reflex time and how quick you are at taking enemies out. You have special abilities at your disposal which are character specific but they are fun to use nonetheless. For example, with Harry, you can turn invisible which is handy in a specific mission where you have to infiltrate an army base and must remain undetected. Whereas Judy can create a black hole that can suck enemies and temporarily knock them out, giving you the time to go in and execute them. There are many more abilities you can unlock but truth be told, I didn't really use many of them. I was more focused on not dying rather than using a special ability in the heat of the battle. Your special abilities are tied to your energy. Every time you pull off a special attack, it eats away the meter. You can refill it by taking out enemies, and stealth kills net you with more energy points than standard kills. You can also change your character on the fly. It also means that there are certain parts of the level which can only be accessed by one or the other character. Judy can teleport through grates and metal bars, while Harry can dash through weak walls. And thankfully, dashing and teleporting does not consume your energy. The main characters can also be upgraded. Every time you level up, you will unlock new upgrades and abilities. You will have a choice to choose one from each row. You can increase the ability's duration, strength or decrease its cost of use. You can also equip one perk that can give you an edge in combat. When I was not dying, I was marveling at the carnage I was creating on my screen as enemies turned to red mist when I sliced them with my blade or stabbed them with my chain. It is a very colorful game and it has this comic book art style with music inspired by those old school grindhouse movies. There are even jukeboxes placed in the game world that allow you to play the soundtrack for that level from the start. Speaking of which, I love the soundtrack and the sound effects of guns being fired and bullets ripping through the flesh of my enemies. It was just satisfying stuff to hear. Now, this is the part where I tend to list the game's shortcomings and yes, there are plenty. Let's talk about the checkpoint system. When you have a game that is unforgiving and kills you in one hit, you would think the checkpoint system will be a bit more forgiving. Nah, you scrub lord, the checkpoint system in God's Trigger is location based. Here's what I mean by it. Most games have a checkpoint system that saves your progress when you clear out a certain number of enemies or when there are no enemies around you like Gears of War does or any other action game in recent memory. 
God's trigger is location based, which means if you turned invisible and sneak past enemies, it will save your progress when you hit a certain part of the level. Now, this is a personal preference here, but I absolutely hate it. Because if I manage to sneak past a couple of enemies, but realize that I need to go back to pick up a collectible, I not only have to take out the enemies I sneaked past, I also have to take out the enemies that stand between me and the next checkpoint. And yes, that is a pain to do. The checkpoints in the final few missions are a bit more forgiving, but at the earlier parts of the game, the checkpoints are very awkwardly placed. Also these checkpoints, they are not saved. So if you quit the level halfway thinking that you can pick up from where you left off, nah it doesn't work like that you scrub, you will be playing the mission from the start. So what's the point of these checkpoints again? Another issue I have is with boss battles. Since you can die in one hit, the boss battles felt very um, simplistic. Rather than trying to look for an opening where you can sneak in your attack, God's Trigger's boss battles are methodical. You will be learning what the bosses are doing, avoiding their attacks, and when it has been made painfully obvious that they are exposed to your attack, you go in for a quick hit and then back out for the boss to repeat the whole sequence again. From a game design's perspective, yes, it makes sense because you can die in one hit, but it just makes the bosses themselves look underwhelming. The game tries its best to spice up the action, but every time it does that, it doesn't nail the landing right. For example, there's a part of the game where Judy hangs back and provides support with a sniper rifle. Once again, you can change between characters on the fly, but for that one specific level, the camera just works differently. It doesn't follow the character but rather gives you an overhead view of the section you're in. Problem comes in when you move in a different section. The camera takes a little bit of time to adjust as you move between doors. And if the enemies see you come through, then you are just one bullet away from meeting your maker. Aside from the campaign missions, you can play the arcade mode which offers bite-sized missions where you have to take out a certain number of enemies randomly generated. Your character progress is shared between the campaign and the arcade mode so that's good. There is a local co-op mode which is a nice feature to add but since I'm the only gamer in the house, I don't know how that plays. Also while I'm here, I must say it would have been nice for an online co-op mode but I think I may be asking too much here. In the form of collectibles, you get to pick up these magazines with these amazingly attractive women for you to um, look at and wonder where things went wrong with your life. Oh my god. These magazines also shed some light on the game's story and expand upon it a little bit. So what's my final word on the game? Look, God's Trigger is a fun game, but the fun part is a bit subjective. If you're the kind of gamer who doesn't mind dying like 20 or more times, then yeah, I would recommend this game. But if you're the kind of gamer who gets upset easily if you fail multiple times, then I would recommend something like Ruiner. God's Trigger is available to buy on Steam for $11.95, Epic Game Store and GOG for $11.99. You can get the game for the same price on PS4 and Xbox One as well. It is not really a storage hog or long game either. It took a little more than 7 gig of storage on my hard drive and I managed to invest 8 hours of my life in this game. But that includes finishing the campaign, dabbling a little bit in the arcade mode and ogling at the magazines I collected. Anyways, that's enough from me. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know by hitting the like button. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. I'm a part-time YouTuber, so your engagement with the channel will help me a lot in the long run. Peace out, angels, and stay awesome.